Hello and welcome to episode 6 in the series on GPU programming. In this episode, we are going to briefly go over the memory hierarchy of our GPU, as understanding it will be crucial to getting the best performance out of our hardware. The purpose of this episode is to give you a quick overview of how memory in CUDA works before we do a deeper dive into each kind of memory in future episodes. When talking about memory, we will often refer to some particular kind of memory as being on or off chip. It might be confusing if you are not familiar with how the GPU internals look like. When you open up your GPU, you can see that it's actually like a small computer inside your computer. There is a chip that does the actual computation and it's connected to VRAM that resides on the PCB. But some of the memory resides in the actual chip, making it much faster to access. When speaking about memory hierarchy, we have to take each unit into consideration. That is our blocks and the threads that run inside our blocks. The first type of memory that we should already be familiar with is global memory. Each thread can read from and write to global memory. Global memory is our largest but also slowest memory space. It is the VRAM of our GPU and it resides off chip. Every time that we call a malloc function or create a global variable, it gets stored inside global memory. The next type of memory that we've already used are registers. They are local to each thread and extremely fast as they reside on chip. Every time that we create a local variable inside our kernel, it gets stored in a register. We can check how much registers we are using by adding a compilation flag for increased verbosity in PTXAS. We can also use QObjectDump to check how are our registers accessed in PTX and SAS. And don't worry if those look like black magic. We will go over what PTX and SAS are in later episodes. There are some performance considerations when using our registers. First would be that using too much registers can cause reduced occupancy. We will go over occupancy in later episodes, as it deserves some more explanation, but for now, just think about it as not having enough resources to run new thread groups. The second one occurs when we use too much registers and the compiler determines that there is no more register space to hold our variables. In this case, our variables get spilled into another kind of memory, which is local memory. And the name might be a bit confusing. It's called local not because of its physical location, but because it's local to a thread. It lives off chip, therefore accessing it is slow, and we want to avoid doing it. When combining with increased verbosity, we can also look into how much of our memory access is to local memory. And the other flags that I'm using here are just to disable compiler optimizations, so it's easier to actually reproduce the issue. I've made a kernel using a lot of variables, and as you can see, after using 255 registers, they started spinning into local memory, resulting in 2040 bytes read from and written to local memory. Another kind of memory that we can use is constant memory. It is a special kind of memory. It resides off chip as global and local memory, but is cached and read only. It is limited to only 64 kilobytes and accesses to different addresses by threads within a warp are serialized. That means that if we access the same memory address by multiple threads, 
we can get better performance than when using global memory. To use constant memory, we have to use the constant keyword when declaring our array. We then have to use CUDA memcopy to symbol to move our data from the CPU to const memory. The final type of memory that we will be discussing is shared memory. And as the name suggests, it's shared between the threads in a block. And what that means is that if one thread in a block writes to shared memory, all the other threads in a block can read the value written by that thread. Moreover, shared memory lives on chip, meaning that accessing it is much faster than accessing global memory. That is why it is very often used in order to increase performance when multiple threads access the same memory address. To allocate an array in shared memory, we just have to add a shared keyword when declaring our array inside our kernel. So, to recap everything that we've learned so far, we have five kinds of memory that we can use in our CUDA code. Register memory that lives on chip, can be read and written to, and has a scope and a lifetime of our thread. Shared memory that also lives on chip, can be read and written to, and has a scope and a lifetime of one block. Local memory that resides off chip, can be read and written to, and has a scope and a lifetime of a thread. Global memory that resides off chip, can be read and written to, and can be accessed anywhere in our code. And its lifetime is controlled by the host that decides when to deallocate it. And finally, constant memory that also resides off chip is read only, globally accessed, and its lifetime is also controlled by the host. This will be it for our introduction to memory in CUDA. In the upcoming episodes, we will dive deeper into how we can use each kind of memory to improve the performance of our code. Subscribe not to miss it, leave a like, comment your feedback, and do anything that helps the algorithm. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.